the one chart girl, so I don't do whizzes that include a lot of charts. In today's video, I'm very happy to welcome a Tableau Public Ambassador. Her work was featured in the Tableau Online Gallery, live from Budapest, Hungary. Judith Baker. Hello, Judith, and welcome to this podcast. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so as a matter of introduction, I should mention that uh, DataViz is actually your real job. So that's your everyday job. You are a DataViz expert in a startup, so not a startup anymore, but yeah. a, a small company in, uh, in Budapest. And um, so we thought that, um, well, for introducing your work, it would be very interesting to uh, actually go through Couchella, which is the work that was uh, featured in uh, the Tableau Public um, Gallery. Um, yeah, so what is actually, uh, what does it mean, Couchella? What does the name Couchella come from? Um, yeah, uh, it's a weird expression. There is the uh, big festival, which is, uh... Coachella and um, this is just something that rhymes to it and uh, first I saw this word um, in some of the works of a British um, graphic designer called, called Gemma Corel and I thought I would just use it and um, yeah uh, people uh, like the title a lot but uh, this is this was not me coming up with it. Can you uh, explain us how your work made it to the Tableau uh, Public Gallery? So that's uh, for, for those who are watching and listening, that's a gallery, which is a virtual gallery online of all the best uh, data visualization that were uh, published on, uh, on Tableau Public. And so you made it. I think there are like 20 or 30 uh, visualizations. So basically, you are among the best. How did it happen? So how um, did you make it to that uh, amazing gallery? Honestly, I, I have no clue. Um, uh, some guys just reached out to me that uh, one of my works has been selected and uh, mm, it was this one. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm super happy with that, but um, I have no clue uh, why they chose this one. I think uh, it's because of the, not because of how it looks, because uh, this has been done before uh, by a lot of guys before me. I think it's be because of the topic and um, because it was something... Uh, really up to date and people could resonate with uh, what I was showing here. Yeah, so um, let's talk about the topic now. So we are seeing the visualization right now uh, on the screen. What do we see actually on the um, on the visualization? Can you uh, guide us? Yeah, um, so it's a Sankey diagram. And um, um, just to demystify things, I don't know how to build a Sankey diagram. Uh, it was a template and um, I couldn't um, reproduce it without that. So um, <laughs> thanks for the guys who are doing this amazing stuff and um, let the community to use that. Um, so here what I was doing is um, I'm a binge watcher and um, I watch a lot of stuff. Right now I'm building a database of all the things that I watched uh, in uh, 2020. And uh, it's really shameful how much uh, time I spend uh, in front of the screen. And this was my uh, watching history uh, for the first uh, three weeks of quarantine. And um, on the first line, we can show the days uh, I was uh, watching the uh, contents. And then uh, what was the streaming platform? I watched a lot of HBO stuff because I was binging through the um, True Detective and uh, um, some films as well, I guess. I don't really remember. Um, and I was watching Tiger King, which I'm not proud of, and uh, some movies like uh, What Men Want and comedies like that. Um, so that's what's here. Uh, all the shameful things that I watched uh, in the first three weeks of quarantine. Yeah, yeah. So 45 hours of, uh, of content in three weeks. That's what you mentioned um, yeah. in the introduction of, uh, of Couchella. That, uh, Visualization. Um, the, the result is quite nice. I mean, it uh, it ended up being quite uh, quite nice with uh, three Sankey uh, diagrams. So what we see is that you are indeed watching HBO more than uh, Netflix and more than the others. Um, were there any uh, technical challenges that you had to go through? So you mentioned the difficulty to make uh, Sankey diagrams uh, with the the, the sigmoid functions, uh, for instance, in uh, in Tableau. Were there any other problems? 
Uh, no, actually, th this was one of the reasons that um, I had the idea at uh, 11 uh, a.m. and I was finished three uh, hours after that. And I'm pretty satisfied with the results. There are visualizations where I work on them for uh, ages and they just don't turn out to be great. So this was a lucky match between the time. Yeah, and this, the one, this one is quite, um, I mean, it, it's quite neat, it's quite simple also. We see a lot of these nowadays that try to combine all kind of, uh, of different um, charts or maps or, and, and you actually end up with something which is quite simple. Was it easy to uh, reach that, uh, that result? Um, yeah, this quiz was inspired by one of my colleagues, um, uh, who is also a Tableau public ambassador, and she's a long time ambassador. She's called Yvette Kovac. Um, but um, just to summarize uh, my type of work, I think I'm the I'm the one chart girl. So I don't do quizzes that include a lot of charts. I do one chart because uh, then you then you know what to focus on. And um, I have uh, attention span issues, so I just don't like, uh, they can be beautiful, but uh, long form visits and uh, overcrowded stuff is really not for me because I want to convey information that can be grabbed easily. And uh, that um, I like those visualizations that uh, can, can be easily recognized. And you remember that, hey, uh, this, that, that, because uh, there was the, graphic that uh, just send it out. So was uh, was the choice of a dark background um, obvious? Uh, because we see in your portfolio that um, in your more recent work, uh, you tend to use uh, some more lighter backgrounds. Uh, whereas uh, in your earlier works, as we can see here, there was uh, a majority of darker uh, backgrounds. So how, how do you make the choice? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's either dark or uh, white or just uh, pretty, um, just a slight gray. Uh, but I don't really use uh, colored uh, backgrounds. I mean, that there are some exception, uh, exceptions, but uh, uh, dark was, uh, I think it was uh, really fancy uh, for even for building um, just company dashboards uh, when I was starting out. Uh, with um, publishing with this uh, every day. Uh, but sometimes it just, uh, it, it sets me in a mood uh, if I'm using a dark background and it's not, not in not all the cases, um, I think it's a bit best fit. So yeah, um, I have those series of visits, um, the three right uh, next to uh, the one that we are having a look at. And they are part of a series um, about uh, my quarantine experience. So those have the exact same background, width, and uh, colors, so that uh, it could make a series. Yeah, but otherwise, it's um, I try it this way and that, and uh, whichever I like uh, better. I usually don't go for second options because uh, when I'm working for uh, myself, stuff I like and I want to do, then I want to do it my way because um, you know when you are working in data visualization um, all day, <laughs> you have feedback on what should be done um, the other way. So, yeah, it's just how I like it. Okay, great. So to conclude, what we can see is that the COVID crisis could actually be a source of in inspiration for some of us. Yeah. So for yeah. you, for instance, it was a, it was a source of inspiration. Great. Thank you so much, Judith, for uh, being with us and for going through your amazing work, Coachella. I just would like to remember or uh, to remind our uh, watchers and listeners that uh, you are Tableau Public Ambassador and you are living in Budapest, Hungary. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.